I lost someone I love in an oil rig blowout. What can I do now? Well, we will tell you everything in this video. So watch it completely without missing any part. BP, the company responsible for the rig and the spill received criticism for not maintaining the blowout preventer, which was installed for precisely this kind of situation. It was revealed that the BOP had not been inspected for years before the disaster and ineffective design rendered it unable to stop the mess massive oil leak. Hi, welcome. Welcome to the life fixture. Let's understand the wall test and wall completion comprehensively before discussing the main part of this video. It's very important, very, very much important to understand wall test and wall completion comprehensively. So let's get started. In the petroleum industry, a wall test is execution of a set of plain data acquisition activities. The acquired data is analyzed to broaden the knowledge and increase the understanding of the hydrocarbon properties therein and characteristics of the underground reservoir where the hydrocarbons are trapped. The test will also provide information about the state of the particular wall used to collect data. The overall objective is identifying the reservoir's capacity to produce hydrocarbons such as oil, natural gas, and condensate. Data gathered during the test period includes volumetric flow rate and pressure observed in the selected wall. Outcomes of a wall test, for instance, flow rate data and gas oil ratio data may support the well allocation process for an ongoing production phase, while other data about the reservoir capabilities will support reservoir management. There are many flavors of well, well tests and various ways to categorize test types by its objectives. However, however, to main categories only by objectives these are productivity tests and the other is descriptive tests. According to the Lee's Pumpers Handbook of Oklahoma Commission on Marginally Production Oil and Gas Wells, there are four basic well test types. Four potential tests, daily tests, productivity tests, and gas oil ratio tests. The Layer 3 in the broad, broader productivity test category. Test objectives will change throughout the different phases of a reservoir or oil field. From the exploration phase of wildcat and appraisal wells through the field development phase and finally through the production phase, which may also have variations from the initial period of production to improved recovery by the end of the field life cycle time. Professionals, professionals working with reservoir modeling may get information about the rock permeability from core samples. Other sources of information to the model are well log data and seismic data, but such data are complementary only. For example, seismic data is insufficient to interpret whether a structural trap has been sealed, which is very important. Information from well tests will supplement the amount of information with flow rate data, pressure data, and other which is needed to build a rich reservoir model. The main objective in the exploration phase is to assess the size of reservoir and state with a given certainty 
whether it has the properties for commercial exploitation and shall contribute to accounting for available reserves. While testing taking place before permanent well completion is referred to as drill stem testing or formation testing depending on the technology used. The reservoir model is further developed to support the phase development, planning and to advise for the optimal location for extra production wells to be drilled. Descriptive wells has, are designed and performed in the new wells. The most important is the flow test. And the flow test is the most important, so let's understand it. The test has also been called daily test and may have various other namings. Often and especially at offshore field, a number of wells produced to a common separator and flows from several separators or facilities may be added into a common link flow in a pipeline that transports oil or gas for sale purposes. The total flow rate of all wells in total are measured. But the contributions of the individual wells are unknown. It is very important to know the individual contributions to account hydrocarbon material balance and for well monitoring and reservoir management. To obtain individual well flow rates, it is common to use a smaller test separator. This is an isolated and downscale processing system in parallel with the normal flows. Regularly, for example, once a month per well, the flow from one and only one selected well is led into the test separator for determining well flow rate for the selected well. The separator divides the flow from the well into the streams of individual products which typically are oil, gas and water, but may include natural gas condensate. Contamination may also be removed and fluid samples collected. This helps to allocate individual flow rate contribution, but the method has uncertainties. Flow rate, water cut, GOR and other parameters for the test system can deviate from production separators. This is generally taken into account by the allocation of the products back to individual wells based on the field total and by using data from the individual well tests. Another method to obtain individual well flow rates takes the state observer approach. For example, this is where the state to be estimated as the unknown flow rates from individual wells. This approach allows the incorporation of other modes of measurement such as spin cuts, manual water cut readings, and dynamometer card based infrared rates. The reconciliation of these measurements with the flow test along with a systematic mechanism to account for measurement noise leads to improved parallel rate estimation accuracy. Multi-phase flow measures have to some degree reduced the need for flow tests and test separators. Multi-phase flow measures are not suitable for all applications where cleanups are required post workover. In the absence of accurate, robust and low-cost multi-phase flow measures, large oil fields with thousands of wells continue to rely on well tests as a primary source of information for production surveillance. What is well completion? It is a very good question that what is meaning by the well completion? Well, well completion is the process of making a well ready for production or for injection after drilling operations. This principally involves preparing the bottom 
of the hole to the required specifications running in the production tubing and its associated downhole tools as well as perfor perforating and stimulating as required. Sometimes the process of running in and cementing the casing is also included. We will be discussing casing a bit later in uh, comprehensively. After a well has been drilled, should the drilling fluids be removed, the well would eventually close in upon itself. Casing ensures that this will not happen while also protecting the well stream from outside incumbents like water or sand. Now it's a time to discuss the small introduction to casing. Casing is a large diameter pipe that is assembled and inserted into a recently drilled section of a borehole. Similarly to the bones of a spine protecting the spinal cord, casing is set inside the drilled borehole to protect and support the well stream. The lower portion and sometimes the entirely is typically held in place with cement. Deeper strings usually are not cemented all the way to the surface. So the weight of the pipe must be partially supported by a casing hanger in the well head. Casing that is cemented in place aids the drilling process in several ways. Prevents contamination of fresh water well zones. Prevents unstable upper formation from caving in and sticking the drill string or forming large caverns. Provides a strong upper foundation to allow use of high density drilling fluid to continue drilling deeper. Isolates various zones which may have different pressure or fluids in the drilled formations from one another. Seals of high pressure zone from the surface. Minimizing potential for, for a blowout prevent fluid loss into or contamination of production zone. Provides a smooth internal bore for installing production equipment. Optimum design the casing program decrease the wall construction cost. Very important point. Enhances the efficiency of operation and also diminishes the environmental impacts. Casing arranged on a rack at a drilling rig in preparation for installation. A slightly different metal string called production tubing is often used without cement inside the final casing string of a well to contain production fluids and convey them to the surface from an underground reservoir. Design. In the planning stages of a well, a drilling engineer usually with input from geologists and uh, others will pick strategic depths at which, which the hole will need to case in order for drilling to reach the desired total depth. This decision is often based on uh, sub subsurface data such as uh, formation pressures and strength wall. Wall integrity and is balanced against the cost objective and desired drilling strategy. With the casing set depths determined, hole sizes and casing sizes must follow. The hole drilled for each casing string must be large enough to accommodate the casing to be placed inside it. A long room for cement between the outside of that casing and the hole. Also, subsequent bills that will continue drilling obviously must pass through existing casing strings. Thus, each casing string will have a subsequently smaller diameter. The inside diameter of the final casing string or a penulty made one in some instances of a linear completion must accommodate the production tubing and associated hardware such as packers, gas lift mandrels and uh, subsurface safety valves. 
casing design for each size of design pipe is done by calculating the worst conditions that may be faced during drilling and over the producing life of the well. Mechanical properties such as longitudinal tensile strength and burst and collapse resistance calculated considering by axial efforts, effects of axial and hop stresses must be sufficient at various depths. Pipe of differing strengths often comprises a long casing strength, which typically will have the great, greatest axial tension and perhaps highest internal burst pressure uh, differentials in the upper parts and the greatest collapsing loads deeper in the well from external pressure versus lowered internal pressure. Casing strings are supported by casing hangers that are set in the well head which later will be topped with the uh, Christmas tree. The lower members of the well head usually are installed on top of the first casing string after it has been cemented in place. We will discuss the Christmas tree later on, don't worry. Everything has been considered in this video for you, so don't worry about anything. Typically, a well contains multiple intervals of casing su successively placed within the previous casing run. The following casing intervals are typically used in an oil or gas well. Conductor casing surface, casing intermediate casing, uh, which is uh, optional, production casing, production liner. The conductor casing serves as the support during drilling operations to flow back returns during drilling and cementing of the surface casing and to prevent collapse of the loose soil near the surface. It can normally vary from sizes such as 18 inches to 30 inches. The purpose of surface casing is to isolate fresh water zones so that they are not contaminated during drilling and completion. Surface casing is the most strictly regulated due to these environmental concerns, which can include regulation of casing depth and cement quality, which is very important. A typical size of surface casing is 13 inches, approximately 13 inches. Intermediate casing may be necessary on longer drilling intervals where necessary drilling might wait to prevent blowouts may cause a hydrostatic pressure that can that can fracture shallower or deeper formations. Casing placement is selected so that the hydrostatic pressure of the drilling fluid remains at a pressure level that is between formation pore pressure and a fracture pressures. In order to reduce cost, a liner may be used which extends just above the shoe bottom of the previous casing interval and hung off down hole rather than, rather than at the surface. It may typically be 7 inches. Although many liners match the diameter of the production tubing. But few wells actually produce through casing. Since, since the production fluids can crude steel or form deposits such as uh, S14s or paraffin waxes and the large diameter can make flow unstable. Production tubing is therefore installed inside the large casing string and the tubing uh, annulus is usually sealed at the bottom of the tubing by a packer. This is an extra step which is which must be done. Tubing is easier to remove for maintenance, replacement or for various types of workover operation. It is significantly lighter than casing and does not require a drilling rig to run in and out of the hole. 
smaller surface rigs are used for this purpose. So now uh, let's discuss cementing. Cementing is performed by circulating a cement slurry through the inside of the casing and out into the annulus through the casing shoe at the bottom of the casing string. In order to precisely place the cement slurry at a required interval on the outside of the casing, a plug is pumped with the displacement fluid behind the cement slurry column which bumps in the casing shoe and prevents further flow of fluid through the shoe. This pump can be seen at surface as a pressure spike at the cement pump. To prevent the cement from flowing back into the inside of the casing, a fluid collar above the casing shoe acts as a check wall and prevents fluid from flowing up through the shoe from the endless. A prolonged recurrent axial and rotational movement within casing would cause wear to the casing interior. With the probability of loads, production loss, and other hazards and costly complications, the following conditions contribute to casing wear. Drill pipe weight mud and additives, RPM and ROP to joint coating, well depth and dog lag. The following are recommendations for preventing measures to minimize casing wear. Minimization of dog lag severity and expect real dog lag at least 1.5 times higher than the planned value. Usage of casing of friendly tool joint materials. Minimize rotor speed and use downhole motor. Increase ROP. Select proper mud type and add lubricant to minimize wear and friction. Usage of drill pipe protectors. Usage of thick wall cast casing in the anticipated wear section area. Usage of software to reduce risk, lower completion, downhole completion. This refers to the portion of the well across the production or injection zones. The well designer has many tools and options available to design the lower completion, uh, the downhole completion, according to the uh, conditions of the reservoir. Typically, the lower completion is set across the productive zones using a liner hanger system, which anchors the lower completion to the production casing strings. The broad categories of lower completion are listed below. Barefoot completion, this type is the most, uh, most basic but can be good choice for hard rock, multilaterals and under balanced drilling. It involves leaving the productive reservoir section without any tubulars. This effectively removes control of flow of fluid from the formation. It is not suitable for weaker formations which might require sand control nor for a formation required selective isolation of oil, gas and water intervals. However, advances in intervention such as quiet tubing and tractor means that barefoot wells can be su successfully produced. Open hole. The production casing is set above the zones of interest before drilling the zone. The zone is open to the wild boar. In this case, a little expense is, gen is generated with perforations. Low interpretation is not critical. The well can be deepened easily and it is easily converted to screen and liner. However, excessive gas and water production is difficult to control and may require frequent clean outs. Also, the interval cannot be selectively stimulated. Open hole completion. This de designation refers to a range of completions where no casing or liner is cemented in place across the production zones. In incompetent formations, uh, the zone might be left, in left entirely bare by some sort of sand control and or flow control means are usually incorporated. Open hole completions have 
seen significant uptake in recent years and there are many configurations often developed to address specific razor wire challenges. There have been many recent developments that have boosted that the success of open hole completion and they also tend to be popular in horizontal walls where cemented installations are more expensive and technically more difficult. The common options for open hole completion are pre-hole seal liner, also often called pre-drill liner. The liner is prepared with multiple small drill holes then set across the production zone to provide well bore stability and an intervention con conduit. Pre-hole liner is often combined with, with open hole packers such as swelling, uh, alastomers, mechanical packers or external casing packers to provide zonal segregation and isolation. It is now quite common to see a combination of pre-hole liner, solid liner and swelling uh, alastomer packers to provide an initial isolation of unwanted water gas zone. Multiple sliding sleeves can also be used in conjunction with open hole packers to provide considerable flexibility in zonal flow control for the life of the well bore. This type of comple completion is also being adopted in some water injection wells. Although these require a much greater performance performance in wall-up open hole packers. Due to the considerable pressure and temperature changes that occur in water injectors, open hole completion in com a comparison with cemented pipe requires better understanding of formation damage, well bore cleanup and fluid loss control. A key difference is that perforating uh, penetrates through the first 6 to 8 inches, um, I mean 15 to 45 centimeter formation around the well bore was open hole completion requires the razor wire fluids to flow through all the uh, filtrate in varied zone around the well bore and lift off of the mud filter cake. Many open hole completions will incorporate fluid loss walls at the top of the liner to provide well control while the upper completion is run. There are an increasing number of ideas coming into the marketplace to extend the options for open hole completion. For example, electronics can be used to, actu to actuate a self-opening or self-closing liner, liner wall. This might be used in an open hole completion to improve cleanup by bringing the wall onto production from the toe end for 100 days. Then self-opening the heel end in flow control devices and intelligent completions uh, are also installed as open hole completions. Pre-hole liner may provide some basic control of solid production where the well bore is thought to fail in uh, aggregated chunks of rubble but it is not typically regarded as a sand control completion. Slotty liner. Slotty liners can be selected as an alternative to pre-hole liner. Sometimes as a personal perf um, a preference or from established practice on a field, it can also be selected to provide a low cost control of sand, uh, sand solid productions. The slotty liner is machined with multiple longitudinal slots, for example, 2 mm, 2 mm into 50 mm spread across the length and circumference of each joint. Recent advances in laser cutting means that slotting can now be done much cheaper to much smaller slot widths and in some situation slotty liner is now used for some functionality as sand control screens. Open hole sand control. This is selected where the liner is required to mechanically hold back the movement of the formation sand. There are many variants of open hole sand control. The Three popular choices being stared on screen open hole gravel packs also known as external gravel packs where a size sand gravel is placed as an annulus around the sand control screen and expandable screen. Screen designs are mainly wire wrap or premium wire wrap screens use spiral welded 
corrosions resistant wire wrapped around a drilled base pipe to provide a consistent a small handicap gap such as 0.012 inches or 0.30 millimeter term 12 gauge. Premium screens use a woven metal cloth wrap around a base pipe. Expandable screens are run to death before being mechanically swagged to a larger diameter. Ideally, expandable screens will be swagged until they contract the wellbore wall. Horizontal open hole completion. This is the most common open hole completion used today. It is basically the same described on the vertical open hole completion, but on a horizontal wall, it enlarges significantly the contact with the razor wire, increasing the production or injection rates of your wall. Sand control on a horizontal wall is completely different from a vertical wall. We can no longer rely on the gravity from the gravel placement. Most service companies use an alpha and beta wave design to cover the total length of the horizontal wall with gravel. It's known that very long walls around 6,000 feet were successfully gravel packed in many occasions, including deep water reservoirs in Brazil. Liner completion, in this case, the casing is set above the primary zone. An uncemented screen and liner assembly is installed across the piece action. This technique minimizes formation damage and gives the ability to control sand. It also makes clean out easy. Uh, perforating expanse is also uh, low to non existent. However, gaps and water buildup is difficult to control and uh, selective stimulation not possible. The wall can't be easily deepened and additional rig time may be needed. Perforated liner. Casing is set above the product, um, producing zone. The zone is drilled and the liner casing is cemented in place. The liner is then perforated for production. This time additional expense in perforating the casing is incurred. Also, a log interpretation is critical and it may be difficult to obtain good quality cement jobs. Perforated casing. Production casing is cemented through the zones and the base section is selectively perforated. Gas and water are easily controlled as is sand. The formation can be selectively uh, stimulated and the wall can be deepened. This selection is adaptable to other completion configurations and logs are available to assist casing decisions. Much better primary uh, casing. It can, however, cause damage to zones and needs good log interpretation. The perforating cost can be very high. Cased hole completion. This involves running casing and a liner down through the production zones and cementing it in place. Connection between the wall bore and the formation is made by perforating. Because perforation intervals can be precisely positioned, this type of completion affords good control of fluid flow. Also, it relies on the quality of the cement to prevent fluid flow behind the liner. As such, it is a most common form of completion. Uh, com conventional completion casing flow means that the producing fluid flow has only one path to surface through the casing. Casing and tubing flow means uh, casing and tubing flow means that there is tubing within the casing that allows fluid to reach the surface. This tubing can be used as a kill string or chemical injection. The tubing may have no go nipple at the end as a means of pressure testing. Pumping flow. The tubing and the pump are run to adapt beneath the working fluid. The pump and the roar strings are installed uh, concent uh, concentrically within the tubing. A tubing anchor prevents tubing uh, movement while pumping. Tubing flow. A tubing string and a production packer are installed. The packer means that all the flow goes through the tubing. Within the tubing, you can mount a combination of tools that will help to control fluid through of uh, fluid flow through the tubing. Gas lift wall. A gas is fed into the valve installed in the mandrels in tubing strip. The hydrostatic head is lowered and the fluid is gas lifted to the surface. 
single wall alternate completions. Uh, in this instance, there is a wall with two zones in order to produce from both uh, the zones are isolated with packers. Blast joints may be used on the tubing within the regions of their perforations. These are thick wall subs that can withstand the fluid uh, abrasions from the producing zones. This arrangement can also work if you have to produce from a high zone given to the uh, depletion of a lower zone. The tubing may also have a flow control mechanism. Single well concentric curl string. Within the well, a small diameter concentric curl string is used to circulate keel fluid with, uh, when needed. Single well two tubing completion. In this instance, two tubing strings are inserted down wall well. They are connected at the lower end by a, a circulating height. Chemicals can be circulated down one tube and production can continue up the other. Completion components. The upper completion refers to all components from the uh, bottom of the production tube, tubing upwards. Proper design of this completion string is essential to ensure the well can flow properly uh, given the reservoir conditions and to permit any operations as are deemed necessary for enhancing uh, production and safety. These are wall heads with situation control, uh, Christmas tree, tubing hanger, production tubing, downhole safety wall that is also named as DHSV, annular safety wall, side pocket mandrel, electrical submersible pump, landing nibble, sliding sleeve, production packer, downhole gauges, perforated joint, uh, perforated joint, uh, centralizer, uh, and wireline in entry guide. Now let's explore all of them one by one. The first one is the well head with situation control. Well, a well head is a component at the surface of an oil or gas well that provides a structural and pressure containing interface for the drilling and production equipment. The primary purpose of a well head uh, is to provide the suspension point and pressure seal for the casing strings that, ca that run from the bottom of the whole section to the surface pressure control equipment. While drilling the oil well, surface pressure control is provided by a blowout preventer that we have already uh, discussed in detail in this video in the start, which is also named as BOP. If the pressure is not contained during drilling operation by the column of drilling fluid, casings, wall head, and BOP, a wall blowout could occur. When the wall has been drilled, it is completed to provide an interface with the reservoir roll and the tubular conduct for the wall fluids. The surface pressure control is provided by a Christmas tree which is installed on top of the well head with isolation valves and chalk equipment to control the flow of a well fluid during production. Well heads are typically welded onto the first string of casing which has been cemented in place uh, during drilling operations to form an integral structure of the well. In exploration wells that are later abandoned, the well head may be recovered for the uh, re refurbishment and reuse. Offshore, where a well head is located on the production platform, it is called a surface well head. And if located beneath the water, then it is referred to as a subsea wall head or mudline wall head. Now let's discuss the components. The primary components of a well head system are casing head, casing spools, casing hangers, chalk, manifold, pack offs, uh, I mean isolate, uh, isolation seas test plugs, mudline suspension systems, tubing heads, tubing hangers, tubing head adapter functions. A well head serves numerous functions, some of which are provide a means of casing suspension. Casing is a permanently installed pipe used to line the well hole for, for pressure containment uh, for pressure containment and collapse prevention during the drilling phase. Provides a means of tubing suspension. A tubing is removable pipe installed in the well through which well fluids pass. Uh, it can pass. Uh, provides a means of pressure sealing and uh, isolation between casing uh, casing at surface 
uh, when many casing strings are used, provides pressure monitoring and pumping access to uh, annually between the different casing tubing strings. It also provides a means of attaching a blowout preventer during drilling, provides a means of attaching a Christmas tree for production operations, provides a reliable means of well, well assessed, provides a means of attaching a well pump. Now let's discuss Christmas tree. In petroleum and natural gas extraction, a Christmas tree or tree is an assembly of walls, casing spools, and fittings used to regulate the flow of pipes in an oil, oil well, gas well, water injection well, water disposal well, gas injection well, condensate well, and other types of well. The first primitive Christmas tree was uh, used by the Hamill brothers to bring uh, a spindle top under control. It consi consisted of a T wall with a 6 inch 150 millimeter and 8 inches which is equal to 200 millimeter wall uh, on the vertical pipe and a 6 inch wall on the horizontal pipe. The vertical wall was closed first and then the wall to the horizontal pipe. Christmas trees are used on both surface and subsea walls. It is common to identify the type of tree uh, as either subsea tree or surface tree which of these classifications has a number of variations. Examples of subsea include conventional uh, dual bore monobore TFL which is known as a through flow line, horizontal midline, um, midline horizontal side wall and TBT known as through bore tree trees. The deepest installed subsea tree is the Gulf of Mexico at approximately 9000 feet which is equal to 2700 meters. Current technical limits are up to around 3000 meters and working temperatures of minus 50 to 350 degree Fahrenheit with a pressure of up to 50,000 psi which is equal to 100 MPa. The primary function of a tree is to control the flow usually oil or gas out of the well. A tree may also be used to control the injection of gas or water into a non-producing well in order to enhance production rates of oil from other wells. When the well and facilities are ready to produce and receive, uh, receive oil or gas, tree walls are open and formation fluid are allowed to go through uh, a flow line. This leads to a processing facility, storage de uh, depot and or other pipeline eventually leading to a refinery or distribution center for gas. Flow lines on subsea walls usually lead to a fixed or, or floating production platform or to a storage ship or Barrage known as a floating storage, uh, a floating vessels, uh, FSO or floating processing unit, which is known as FPU or floating production storage, and uh, a floating vessel, which is known as FPFSO. A tree open provides a numerous additional function, including chemical injection points, well intervention means, pressure uh, relief means, um, uh, monitoring points such as pressure, temperature, gradients, origins, sand detection flow rate, flow uh, composition, wall, wall and choke wall position uh, for feedback and connection point for devices such as downhole pressure and temperature uh, transducers DHPT on producing walls chemicals or alcohols or oil uh, distills may be injected to uh, pre prelocate production problems such as blockages. Uh, functionality may be extended further by using the control system on a subsea tree to monitor measure and react to sensor output on the tree or even down the well bore. The uh, control system attached to the tree uh, controls the downhill safety wall which is known as SC, SSV, DHSV or SSSV while the tree acts as an attachment and conduct means of the con control system to downhill safety wall. Tree complexity has increased over the last few decades. There are frequent manufactured uh, from blocks of steel con co containing multiple walls rather than being assembled from individual flying and component. This is especially tree, uh, true in subsea applications where the resemblance, resemblance to the Christmas tree no longer exists given the frame and support system into which the main wall block is integrated. Note that a tree and wall head are separate precise of equipment not to be mistaken as the same piece. The Christmas tree is installed on top of the wall head. A wall head is used without a Christmas tree during drilling operation and also for the riser 
Thai buy bag uh, situation that later would have the tree installed at Rise right Top. Walls being produced with road palms, palm shacks, nodding donkeys, grasshoppers, palms, and so on. Frequently, do not utilize any tree owing the absence of the pressure containment requirement. Warbs. Subsea and surface trees have a large variety of warb configurations and combinations of manual and are uh, actuated hydraulic or uh, pneumatic warbs. Examples are identified in API specification 6A uh, and 7, 17D. Basic surface tree consists of two or three manual walls, usually gate walls, because of their flow characteristics that is low restriction to the uh, flow of fluid uh, when fully open. A typical uh, sophisticated surface tree will have at least four or five walls normally arranged in a uh, cru crucifix type pattern, hence the endurance of the term Christmas tree. The two lower walls are called the master walls, upper and the lower respectively. Master walls are normally in fully open position and are never open or closed when the wall is flowing except in an emergency to prevent origins of the wall ceiling surfaces. The lower master wall would normally be manually operated while the upper master wall is often hydraulically uh, actuated allowing it to be used as a means of remotely shutting in the wall in the event of emergency. An uh, actuated uh, wing wall is normally used to shut in the wall when flowing, thus preserving the master wall for positive shut off for maintenance uh, purposes. Hydraulically operated wing walls are usually built to be fail safe closed, meaning they require active hydraulic pressure to stay open. This feature means that if control for it fails, the well will automatically shut itself in without operating without operator action. The right hand wall is often called the flow wing wall or the production wing wall because it is in the uh, flow path the hydrocarbons take to production facilities or the path water gas will take from uh, production to the wall in case of injection walls. The left hand wall is often called the uh, kill wing wall KWV. It is primarily used for injection of fluids such as crayon inhibitor or methanol to prevent hi uh, hydrate formation in the North Sea. It is called the non-active side arm uh, NASA. It is typically manually operated the wall at the the top is called the swear wall and lies in the path usually used for wall interventions like wire line and coil tubing for such operations. A lubricator is rigged up to on to the top of the tree and the wire or coil is lowered through the lubricator past the swear wall and into the wall. This wall is typically manually operated. Some trees have a second swear wall, the two are in one uh, on top of the other. The intention is to allow rigging down equipment from the top of the tree with a wall flowing while preserving the two barrier rule. With only a single swear wall, the upper master wall is usually close to act as a second barrier forcing the wall to be shut in for a day during rig town operations. However, avoiding delaying production for a day is usually too small again to be worth the extra expense of having Christmas tree with a second swab wall. Subsea trees are available in either vertical or horizontal configuration with further uh, specialty available such as the deal bore, monobore, concentric, uh, concentric drill through, mudline guideline or guideline. Subsea trees may range in size and weight from a few tons to approximately 70 tons for high pressure, deep water, deeper than 3,000 feet or 910 meter guidelines applications. Subsea trees contain many additional wall and accessories compared to uh, surface trees. Typically, a, sub a subsea tree would have a chalk wall, permits control of flow, a flow line connection interface, hoof, a flange, or other connection. Subsea control interface, direct hydraulic, uh, electro hydraulic, or electric, and sensors uh, for gathering data such as pressure, temperature sand flow, regions, multi-phase flow, and single-phase flow such as water or gas. Tubing hanger. A tubing hanger is a component used in the completion of oil and gas production walls. It is said the tree or the wall head and uh, s s suspends the production tubing and or casing. Sometimes it provides a portion, portioning to allow the 
uh, communication of hydraulic electric and other downward function as well as chemical injections it also serves to seal in the annulus and uh, production areas production tubing production tubing is a tube used in a wall bore through which a uh, production fluids are produced background a uh, production tubing is run into the drill wall after the casing is run and cemented in place production tubing protects wall bore casing from wear tear corrosion and uh, depositions of byproducts such as sand soil paraffin and as falsins along with other components that constitute the production string it provides a continuous bore from the production zone to the wall head through which oil and gas can be produced it is usually between 5 and 10 cm in diameter and is held inside the casing through the use of expandable packing devices purpose and design of production tubing is to enable quick efficient and safe installation removal and reinstallation if there is more than one zone of production in the wall up to four lines of production tubing can be run production casing production casing is the final casing string set in the wall and usually reaches uh, from the surface to td the type of casing used to depends upon the different conditions in the wall commonly production uh, casing sizes ranges from uh, 4 1/2 inches to as large as an uh, approximate 10 inches it is the last string cemented in a wall unless a production liner is run this casing oscillates production in the wall so that the different intervals can be selectively perforated and pro produce usually the lower zones of the production are perforated first the formations are uh, depleted those uh, perforations are squeezed with cement and the casing uh, perforated above the original perforations the production is usually brought to the surface through tubing tubing is a smaller diameter pipe that is run inside of the production casing a packer is usually set at the lower end of the casing to prevent formation fluid from entering the annulus between the tubing and the casing a packer is an uh, elastomer a cylinder that forms a pressure seal between the tubing and the casing obviously good cement placement is required in the production intervals flow behind the casing from the production zone to a barren formation can prevent production of a large quantity of hydrocarbon okay production liner now a production liner is a string of casing set across a production interval but does not extend all the way back to the surface usually there is about a 500 feet more or less overlap between a liner and the casing string above the production liner has the same function as a complete string of the production casing in this case the surface casing is set to a depth of about 3000 feet two intermediate strings are set in this wall a approximate 14 inch string and a, a approximate 10 inch string 8 inch production casing is set at a depth of about 15000 feet and a 5 inch production liner set to a uh, td probably the uh, this wall required a high mud weight at the bottom of the hole and cementing the uh, 8 inch casing at td would have resulted in too much pressure uh, and uh, low circulation if low circulation occurs during a primary cement job there is a little guarantee that cement will fill the uh, designated volume behind the casing this will require the casing be perforated and cemented squeezed into the casing wall wall bore annulus down hole safety wall a down hole safety wall refers to a component on an oil and gas wall which act as a fail safe to prevent an uncontrolled release of reservoir fluids in the event of the worst case scenario surface disaster it is almost always installed as a vital component on the completion operational these walls are commonly a uh, unidirectional clapper walls which open downward side that the flow of the wall bore fluids tries to push it shut wall pressure from the surface pushes it uh, it open this means that when closed it will isolate the reservoir fluids from the surface most downhole safety valves are controlled hydraulically from the surface meaning they are opened using a hydraulic connection link directly to a wall control panel when hydraulic pressure is applied down a control line the hydraulic pressure forces a sleeve within the wall to slide downward This movement compresses a large spring and pushes the flapper downward to open the wall. 
when hydraulic pressure is removed the spring pushes the sleeve back up and causes the flapper to shut in this way it is fail safe and will isolate the weld bore in the event of a loss of the weld head the full design designation for a typical valve is tubing retrievable surface control subsurface safety valve abbreviated to TRSCSSV okay now let's discuss the positioning the location of the downhole safety valve within the completion is a precisely determined parameter intended to optimize safety there are arguments against it either being too high or too low in the wall, so the foil depth is a compromise of all factors. MMS regulations state that the wall must be placed to less than 30 feet, 30 meter, 100 feet below the mud line. Reasons to keep it reasons to keep it high. The further down the wall, the DHA CV is located the greater the potential inventory of hydrocarbon above it when closed. This means that in the event of loss of containment at surface, there is more fluid to be spilled causing environmental damage. Or in the worst case, more, more fuel for, uh, for fire. Therefore, placing the wall high limits uh, this hazard. Another reason relates to the hydraulic control line. Hydraulic pressure is required to keep the wall open as a part of the fail-safe design. However, if the wall is too far down the wall, then the weight of the hydraulic fluid alone may apply to sufficient pressure to keep the wall open, even with the loss of surface pressurization. First, the reasons to keep it low. As part of the role of the DHSV that we have discussed to isolate the surface from wall bore fluid, it is necessary for the wall to be positioned away from the wall where it could not potentially come to the home. This implies that it must be placed subsurface in all circumstances that is in offshore wall, not above the seabed. There is also the risk of uh, cracking in the event of catastrophic loss of the topside facility. The wall is specifically placed below the maximum depth where, where carating is expected to, to be a risk. If there is a risk of methane hydrate, uh, clusterate plus uh, forming as a pressure changes through the valve due to the jowl, now uh, Thompson cooling, then this is a reason to keep it low where the rock is warmer than the appro uh, uh, appropriately calculated temperature, deploying and retrieving. Most downhole safety valves installed as part of the completion design design as are uh, classified as tubing retrievable. This means that they are installed as a component of the completion string and run in during completion. Retrieving the wall should, uh, should it malfunction requires a workover. The full name for the most common type of downhole safety wall is a, a tubing retrievable surface control subsurface wall. If a tubing retrievable wall fails, rather than go to the expense of a workover, a wireless retrievable wall may be used instead. This type of wall can, uh, can feed inside the uh, production tubing and is deployed on wire line after the old wall has been uh, straddled open. Legal requirement, the importance of the DHSVS is uh, undisputed. Graphics images of wall in Kuwait on fire after the first Gulf War, uh, Gulf, uh, Gulf War after their wall had were removed demonstrate the uh, perils of not using the component at the time, they were deemed unnecessary because they were onshore walls. It is, however, not a direct le legal requirement in many places. In the United Kingdom, UK, uh, no law mandates the use of the DHSVS. However, the 1974 Health and Safety at Work Act requires that measures are taken uh, to ensure that uncontrolled release of the well bore fluid is prevented, even in the worst case. The brilliance of the act is that it does not issue prescriptive guidelines for how to achieving the goal of health and safety, but, but merely sets out the requirement that the goal be achieved. It is up to the oil companies to decide how to achieve it and DH, uh, ASVS are uh, uh, as an important component of that decision as such also not a legal requirement. It is company policy from many operators in the UK CS. Okay, now let's discuss the issues. While the DHSV isolates the production tubing, a loss of integrity could allow well bore fluid to bypass the valve and escape to surface through the annulus. 
for valves using gas lift it may be requirement to install a safety valve in the uh, a annulus of the valve to ensure that the surface is protected from a loss of annulus containment however these valves are not as common and they are not necessarily installed at the same position in the wall meaning it is possible that the fluids could snake their way around the wall to surface annular safety valve on wells with cast lift capability many operators consider it prudent to install a valve which will isolate the a annulus for the same reason a dhsv may be needed to isolate the production tubing in order to prevent the inventory of natural gas downhole from becoming a hazard as it becomes on piper alpha side pocket uh, mandrel this is welded a uh, machine product which contains a side pocket alongside the main tubular con conduit the side pocket typically 1 inch or 1 and 1/2 inch diameter is designed to contain gas lift valve which allows flow of high pressure gas uh, into the tubing thereby reducing the tubing pressure and allowing the hydrocarbons to move upwards electrical submersible pump a submersible pump or electric submersible pump esp is a device which has a, a, a hermetically a seal, sealed motor closed coupled to pump body the whole assembly is submerged in the fluid to be pumped the main advantage of this type of pump is that it prevents pump cavitation a problem associated with a high elevation difference between the pump and the fluid surface submersible pumps are push fluid to the surface rather than jet pumps which create a vacuum and rely upon atmospheric pressure submersible use pressurized fluid from the surface to drive a hydraulic motor down downhole rather than electric motor and are used in heavy oil applications with heated water as a motive fluid uh, now let's discuss the brief history in 1928 armenian oil delivery system engineer and inventor uh, armis uh, uh, atunov uh, successfully installed a false submersible oil pump in an oil field in 1929 uh, plojer pumps uh, today uh, plojer industries developed the design of the submersible turbine pump the a uh, forerunner of the modern multi-stage submersible pump working principle electrical uh, electric submersible pumps are multi-stage uh, centrifugal pumps operating in a vertical position liquids uh, accelerated by the impeller lose their kinetic energy in the diffuser where the conversion of kinetic to pressure energy takes place this is the main operational mechanism of radial and mixed flow pumps in the hsp the motor is hydraulic motor rather than the electrical motor and may be closed cycle keeping the power fluid separated from uh, the produced fluid or open cycle uh, mingling the power fluid with the with the produced fluid downhole with the with the surface separation the pump shaft is connected to the gas separator or the separator by mechanical cop um, coupling at the bottom of the pump fluids enter the pump through the intake screen and are lifted by the pump stages other parts uh, include the radial bearings uh, bushings distributed along the length of the shaft providing radial support to the pump shaft and optional thrust bearing takes up part of the axial forces arising in the pump but most of those forces are absorbed uh, by the protector thrust bearing there are also secure type submersible pump there is a steel screw which is used as a working element in them the screw allows the pump to work in water with a high sand uh, content and other mechanical impurities application submersible pumps are found in many applications single stage pumps are used for draining sewage pumping generally industry pumping and slurry pumping they are also popular with pond filters multiple stage submersible pumps are typically lowered down a borehole and most typically used for residential commercial municipal and industrial water extraction ab uh, extraction abstraction water wells and in oil wells other uses for submersible pumps include sewage treatment plants uh, sea water handling fire fighting since it is flame uh, uh, retardant cable water well and de well drilling of your drilling rigs artificial lifts mine dewatering and irrigation system pumps in the electrical hazards locations used for combustible liquid or for water they may be contaminated with combustible liquid 
must be designed not to ignite uh, initiate the liquid or vapors used in oil wells submersible pumps are used in oil production to provide a relatively efficient form of artificial lift able to operate across a broad range of flow rates and depths by decreasing the pressure at the bottom of the well uh, lowering a bottom hole of flowering pressure or increase uh, draw down significantly more oil can be produced from the well when compared with nature production the pumps are typically electrically powered referred to as electrical submersible pump esp or if hydraulically powered referred to as hydraulic submersible pumps hsp uh, esp system consists of both surface components uh, housed in the production facility for example an oil platform and subsurface components found in the well hole surface components include the motor controller often a variable speed controller uh, surface cables and transformers these surface components are de deployed by attaching to the downhole end of a tubing string while at the surface and then lowered uh, into the well bore along with the tubing a high voltage uh, 3 to 5 kV alternating current source at the uh, surface drives the subsurface motor until recently ESPs had been costly to install due to the requirement of an electric cable extending from the source to the motor. This cable had to be wrapped around jointly tubing and connected at each joint. New coil tubing umbilicals allow for both the piping and electric cable to be deployed with a single conventional coil tubing unit. Cable for sensor and control data may also be included. The subsurface component generally including a pump portion and a motor portion with the motor downhole from the pump. The motor rotates a shaft that in turn rotates pump impellers to lift fluid through production tubing to the surface. These components must uh, reliably work at high temperature of up to 300 degree Fahrenheit and high pressure of up to 5000 PSI 34 MPA. From deep wells of up to 12,000 feet, 3.7 km deep with high energy requirement of up to 1,000 horsepower, 750 kilowatt. The pump itself is a multi-stage unit which, uh, with the number of stages being determined by operating requirements. Each stage includes an impeller and diffuser. Each impeller is coupled to the rotating shaft and accelerators, uh, accelerates fluid from near the shaft readily outward. The fluid then enters a non-rotating diffuser which is not coupled to the shaft, contains wings that direct fluid back toward the shaft. Pumps come in diameter from 900 mm which is equal to 3.5 inches to 254 mm equals to 10 inches and vary between 1 meter and 8.7 meter in length. The motor used to drive the pump is typically a three-phase squirrel cage induction motor with a nameplate power rotating in the range 7.5 kW to 560 kW. ESP assemblies may also include uh, seals coupled to the shaft between the motor and the pump screens to re reject sand and fluid separators at the pump intake that separate caps, oil and water. ESPs have uh, dramatically lower uh, efficiency with significant fractions of gas water than about 10% volume at the pump intake so separating gas uh, from oil prior to the pump can be important. Some ESPs include a water oil separator which permits water to be re-injected downhole as some wells produce up to 90% water and fluid li lift is a significant cause re-injecting water before lifting it to the surface can reduce energy consumption and improve economies given ESP's high rotational speed of up to 4000 RPM and tight clearances, they are not very tolerant of solids such as sand. There are at least 15 brands of oil feed ESPs used throughout the world landing nipple. Completion component fabricated as a short uh, section of heavy wall tubular with a mechanical internal surface that provides a seal area and a locking profile. Landing nipples are included in the most completions uh, that uh, predetermine pre troubles to enable the installation of uh, flow control devices. Such as plugs and chalks, three basic types of landing nipples are commonly used. No go nipples, selective landing nipples, and ported or safety valve nipples. 
sliding sleeve. A sliding sleeve is a standard component for the completion of oil or gas well. Their main uses are to shut off flow from one or more reservoir zone or to regulate pressure between zones. There are two main categories of sliding sleeves, open close and choking. Open close sleeves are uh, shifted between a full open position and a closed position. They are used to shut off flow from a zone for economic reasons or to shut off a zone that is depleting or producing too much water. In multi-zone wells, they are used to regulate which zones to produce uh, to produce from and which ones to sh uh, shut off. Mechanically uh, actuated uh, sleeves are simple and inexpensive but require actuation by a lock which must be run in the well on wireline or coil tubing. Hydraulically uh, actuated sleeves are more complicated but can be actuated from a small pump at surface. King sleeves can be used to regulate the pressure between two or more zones. They are also used to regulate the flow of fluid into a wall during a propent fracturing or hydraulic fracturing operations. Choking sleeves are all hydraulically actuated and have a much more complex design than open closed sleeves. Operation A separation tool is pinned in the open position when run by a slick line. This provides a flow path through the center of the tool which is being set in the sliding sleeve. The separation tool adopts to most manufacturers locks to match the nipple profile in sliding sleeve. The lock and separation tool assembly are installed with the appropriate running tool and prong. When production is desired from an upper zone while blanking off the lower zone, a sliding sleeve with a nipple profile above and polished sub below is installed in the tubing string opposite the upper zone. Packers are used to isolate the zones. The sliding sleeve can be shifted to the open position and the separation tool can be run and locked into the board of the sliding sleeve by standard uh, slick line methods. The separation tool allow uh, flow to enter from the envelope and produce up the tubing. The two blanks of the tubing below the sleeve to isolate the lower zone. The separation tool assembly is run on an appropriate running tool complete uh, with a running prong. The running prong is connected to the top of the internal seal prong with a, a shear pin and the running tool is attached to the lock in the normal manner. After uh, look, locating the sliding sleeve, the operator just uh, downwards to set the log, then pull over to close the isolating plug in the separation tool. As this happens, a, a gotcher uh, spring in the isolation plug moves a steel shear pin into the groove on the sealing prong and can o-ring on the internal prong seals to isolate the tubing below the sliding sleeve. The running prong that uh, that is pinned on the top of the internal prong is then sheared and the slick line tool string may be withdrawn from the wall. Production Packer A production packer is a standard component of the completion hardware of oil or gas was used to provide a seal between the outside of the production tubing and the inside of the casing liner or well bore wall. Based on their primary use, packers can be divided into two main categories production packers and service packers. Production packers are those that remain in the world during well production. Service packers are used temporarily during well service activities such as seamer skewing, uh, acidizing, fracturing and well testing. It is usually run in close to the bottom end of the production tubing and set at a point above the top uh, perforations or sand screens. In walls with multiple reservoir zones, packers are used to isolate the perforations for each zone. In these situations, a sliding sleeve would be used to, to select which zones to produce. Packers may also be used to protect the casing from pressure and produce fluid, isolate sections of a corroded casing, casing leaks or secure perforation and isolate or temporarily abundant uh, product, um, producing zones. In water flooding de uh, de developments in which water is injected into the reservoir, packers are used in injection wells to isolate the zone onto which the water must be injected. 
there are occasions in which running a packer may not be desirable for example high volume wells that are produced both um, up the tubing and envelopes will not include a packer rod pumped wells are not normally run with packers because the associated gases produce up the envelopes in general wall completion may not be incorporate a packer when the envelope space is used as a production conduit. A production packer is designed to grip and seal against the casing, casing ID. Gripping is accomplished with metal wedges called slips. These components have a sharpened um, uh, uh, carburized teeth that dig into the metal of the casing. A sealing is accomplished with large cylindrical rubber elements. In situations where the seal pressure is very high, Above 5,000 psi measurings are used on either side of the element to prevent the rubber from uh, extruding. A packer is run in casing on production tubing or wire line. Once the desired depth is reached, the slaves and the element must be expanded out to contact the casing. Axial loads are applied to push the slip up a ramp and to compress the element, causing it to expand outward. The axial loads are applied either hydraulically, mechanically, or with a slow burning chemical charge. Most packers are permanent and require a milling in order to remove them from the casing. The main advantages of the permanent packers are lower cost and greater sealing and gripping capabilities. In situations where a packer must be easily removed from the wall, such as secondary recoveries, Recompletions uh, re or to change out the production uh, tubing, a retrievable packer must be used. To unset the tool, either a metal ring is sheared or sleeve is shifted to disengage connecting components. Retrievable packers have a more complicated design and generally lower sealing and gripping capabilities, but after removal and subsequent uh, servicing, they can be reused. Now it's the time to discuss the applications. Applications, casing protection, separation of multiple zones, isolation packers, elimination of surging and heading, subsurface, safety control, artificial gas lift, suspend the weight of tubing when there is compressive load on the tubing string. There are three types of packers, mechanical and hydraulic set, and permanent. All packers fall into one or a combination of these. Mechanical set packers are set by some form of a tubing movement, usually a rotation or upward downward motion. Others can be weight set. The tubing weight can be used to compress and expand the sealing element. By a simple up string pull, the packer is released. It is used best in shallow lower pressure wall that are straight. It is not designed to withstand pressure differences unless a hydraulic hole down is incorporated. Tension set packers are set by pulling a tension on the tubing, slacking off releases the packer. Good for shallow wells with moderate pressure differences. The lower pressure helps to increase the setting force on the packer. Use in a stimulation wall. Rotation set packer Tubing rotation is used to set the packer to mechanically lock it in. A left-handed turn engages and a right-hand turn retrieves it. Hydraulic set packers use fluid pressure to drive the cone behind the slip. Once set, they remain set by use of either entrapped pressure or mechanical lock. They are released by picking up the tubing they are good for use in deviated or crooked holes where tubing movement is restricted or unwanted. The tubing can be hung in initial tension. In uh, flatable packers, use a fluid pressure to inflate a long cylindrical tube of uh, reinforced rubber to set the packer. Frequently used for open hole testing in exploration walls and for cement assurance in production walls. Also using wells where the packer must pass through a restriction and then set a much large diameter in, ca in casing or open holes. Many variations for specific applications are available including those capable of withstanding high pressure differential. 
Farmer and Packers are run and set on electric wireless drill pipe or tubing. Uh, opposed uh, sleeves are uh, positioned to lock it in compre uh, co compression. Once set, this packer is resistant to motion for either direction. Wireline uses an electric current to uh, detonate an explosive charge to set the packer. A release that uh, then uh, uh, frees the some leaf uh, from the packer tubing can be used by applying rotation or a pull or a combination of both. There are good in ones that have high pressure differential or large tubing load variation and can be set precisely. They can be set the uh, the pass seamer packers. In this case, the tubing is cemented in place inside the casing or open hole. This type of packer is cheap. Factors affecting packers: temperature and pressure. The most important there are the two things: temperature and pressure can affect how the tubing and the packer behave, uh, as this could cause changes in the packer and tubing expansion rates. If the packer allows a f a free motion, then the tubing can elongate or shorten if not the tensile and the uh, compressive force can develop within. Downhole gauges. This is an electronic or, or a fiber optic sensor to provide uh, continuous monitoring of downhole pressure and temperature gauges either use a one or four inches control line clamp onto the outside of the, of the tubing string to provide an electrical or fiber optic communication to surface or transmit major data to surface by acoustic signals in the tubing wall. The, the information obtained from these monitoring devices can be used to model reservoir or predict the life or problem in a specific well bore. Perforated joint. This is a length of tubing with holes uh, punched onto it. If used, it will normally be uh, positioned below the packer and will offer an alternative uh, entry path for reservoir fluids onto the tubing uh, in case the shoe becomes blocked, for example, by a stuck uh, um, perforation gun formation isolation wall. Uh, this component placed towards the foot of the uh, completion string is used to provide two-way isolation from the formation for completion operation without the need for kill weight fluids. Their use is uh, uh, sporadic as they do not enjoy the best reputation for reliability when it comes to opening them at the end of the completion process. Okay, next is centralizer. In highly diverted walls, this component may be included towards the foot of the completion. It consists of a large collar which keeps the completion string centralized within the hole while cementing. Wireline entry a guide. This component is often installed at the end of the tubing or the shoe. It is intended to make pulling out wireline tools easier by offering a guiding surface for the tool string to re-enter the tubing without getting caught on the side of the shore. Uh, perforating and uh, stimulating. In case hole completion, the majority of walls, once the completion string is in place, the final thing is to make a connection between the well bore and the formation. This is done by running uh, perforation guns to blow holes in the casing or liners to make a connection. Modern perforations are made using shaped explosive charge uh, similar to the armor penetrating charge used on anti-tank rockets uh, bazooks. Sometimes once the well is fully completed, further simulation is necessary to achieve the planned productivity. Uh, there are a number of uh, stimulation techniques. The next is acidizing. Very interesting. This involves the injection of chemicals to eat away at any skin damage, cleaning up the formation, thereby improving the flow of reservoir fluids. A strong acid, usually hydraulic acid, is used to dissolve rock formation, but this acid does not react with the hydrocarbon. As a result, the hydrocarbons are more accessible. Acid can also be used to clean the well bore of some scales that form from a mineral laden pro produced water. The next is fracturing. This means creating and extending fractures from the uh, perforation tunnel deeper into the formation, increasing the surface area for formation fluids to flow into the wall as well as extending past any possible damage 
near the valve bore. This may be done by injecting fluids at the high pressure hydraulic fracture, injecting fluids, uh, fluids laced with round granular material. The next is acidizing and fracturing combined method. This involves use of explosive and injection of chemicals to increase acid raw contact nitrogen circulation. Sometimes productivity may be hampered due to the re residue of completion fluids heavy brain in the well bore. This is particularly a problem in gas wells. In, th in these cases, coil turbine uh, uh, tubing may be used to pump nitrogen at high pressure into the bottom of the borehole to circulate out the brine. Well, now let's summarize what we have learned so far in just a few sentences. What is well completion? A very uh, simple word. Well completion is a series of steps depending upon the completion method performed after the drilling and casing phase that enable to well to produce hydrocarbons. The primary goals are to stimul stimulate the well to maximize production and running tubing to enhance the well's lifespan and ease of maintenance. The well completion process. Well completion is a phase of the well life cycle between drilling and production. Essentially preparing a drilled and case well for production. This document forces, uh, focuses on tight oil and gas wells. Since completion is more complex, expensive and important for these wells, the well completion process typically involves the following steps. Number one, well preparation. These steps in uh, analogous to the rig up phase of the drilling, various elements of the phrase are assembled, sand, fluids, blenders, pumps, chemicals, data wire, etc. This is also the step where the well is flushed with a mix of water and acid to clean out the well in preparation for the fray. Second, stimulation, also known as hydraulic fracturing or the fray, industry insiders or fray general public. Using methods such as plug and probe, the various stages are isolated so that service providers can perforate and frag the well. One stage at a time, the fray involves pumping down a perforation gun to create holes in the casing to interface with the surrounding rock. Then the combination of fluid water mixed with, with uh, surfactants, etc. and propagant example sand are pumped at a very high pressure into the well. The water cracks or fractures the surrounding rock. Rock features typically extend to 50 to 500 feet from the well bore, with the longest recorded fracture of being flags than 600 meters. The propane included in the fracture travels into the fracture and props the uh, fixtures open so that the oil and gas can flow through them into the well bore. Stage counts have been increasing lately. Uh, with wells often having 100 to 200 stages now. Number 3. Drill out. This is the removal of any material used to isolate stages during the break process, often done using a coil tubing drill out method. In a plug and perf method of stimulation, a surface provider drills through the plug that was used to isolate the various stages. Some operators use a dissolvable plug, but at this time it appears that the drill out method remains most popular. Number four, flow back output online. This is the process of bringing the well to production. It may also include shutting in or soaking the well, which some believe increases production and EUR, which is known as estimated ultimate recovery or lifetime production of the well. Well completion materials management. Materials management during the completion process involves the timely purchasing, delivery, and storage of all materials required for the completion of process or more specifically for the fray process. Most materials are simply ordered and delivered on time as a result of longer laterals and growing stage counts. Wells are consuming more propane and fluid, which is water. Each of these critical materials has their own unique challenges and with shutdown cost of $100,000 to $250,000 per day. You do not 
want to incur stoppage as a result of a shortage of these critical materials. Propent. As stage counts have grown, the amount of propane typically sent has increased as well. Increases in pump pressure and more perforations per literal uh, foot means more and longer flexure. This increases the amount of propane required per well in areas such as the Permian Basin to factor high drilling intensity and increased propane per well combined to create cause and sourcing challenges for propens. Not only is sourcing challenging and expensive, but trucking logistics can also be difficult. Fluids. Freight fluid requirements are also impacted by increases in the pumping pressure and the number of stages per wall. This increases the demand for freight fluid. Unlike sand, which is easily stored on site, freight fluids have limited on-site storage in freight pounds. These ponds must be continuously replenished from walls, ponds, rivers, and lakes. In addition, companies are increasingly treating and reusing the brackish water from producing well freight fluid management, which involves sourcing water, scheduling recycled fluids that cannot be stored in freight ponds, and moving water between ponds as needed, and scheduling the walls that consume the fluids can be very tricky process to manage, of course with idle cost of $100,000 to $150,000 per day during the freight process, running short of freight fluid can be costly mistake. Okay, now well completion engineering. Well completion engineering uh, encompasses the following steps. Creating the authority for expenditure, AFE, designing the completion process, um, uh, perforation design, pump schedule, and completion procedure, uh, sourcing the materials, especially floors and propens, or gesturing the various service providers, particularly the freight crew, drill out, freight data, consulting, tubing, and assembling the Christmas tree, or gesturing the daily and summary drilling reports and their distribution both internally and uh, to non operating partners, uh, collecting field costs, estimates, and forwarding. Those to, ac to accounting handoff to the uh, production team, reviewing all service provider bills and approving them for payment, assembling and analyzing all completion data in an effort to refine and optimize the process for next world, sharing all completion data with non offs. Completion engineers must also stay uh, abreast of the latest developments in technology, materials, and technology. This can be accomplished by socializing with services providers who work on other operators while data sharing with other operators where the company may have a non-op position or a data sharing relationship, talking with vendors, attending seminars and conferences and socializing with other operators over beers. In rapidly evolving field like completion engineering where efficiency can mean the a difference between making an, a profit or loss, staying informed is a critical part of the completion engineer's job. Wall completion design. Wall completion design involves three primary processes. Perforation, PERF, design, pump schedule, and a completion process description. Uh, the completion process uh, description and pump schedule tend a very little form uh, from one wall to another. However, the PERF design varies based on various aspects of each wall. The first step of uh, perforation design is to define the maximum uh, com uh, com completable length. This takes into account a number of variables such as uh, hard line, buffer, production, top trigger, toe information, dog leg, sovereignty, and more. Once you have the maximum co uh, completable length and its location on this directional survey, you can start to design your a perforation a PR design that involves a number of variables such as plug set, cluster spacing stages, cluster per stage, stage spacing, uh, PRFs per cluster, and more. In this phase, engineers may use a standard model. However, the next phase involves fine tuning that model based on wireline data collected about the wall. The engineer then looks at the gamma ray gas content, uh, lithology, and a number of other variables as an overlay to the standard PRF plan. Then he fine tunes various variables 
to create the perfect PRF design for this wall. This is amazing and outstanding because it is a very a great trick. Once the plane is finalized, he generates a detailed PRF plan along with the materials list for uh, perforating the wall, such as PRF gun requirements. The next is wall completion reporting. Wall completion reporting is a process of collecting and distributing activity, cost, materials, and operational data from the completion process. Groups such as IADC, PPDM, and Energistics have attempted to establish various standards for coding, modeling, uh, formatting, and transmitting certain aspects of this data. Earlier generations of wall reporting focus exclusively on delivering a report in paper or PDF format. Second generation solutions add the ability to export completion data so it's appreciated for what if analysis creating key matrices and loading into data visualization packages like Spotify. The newest generation of reporting software leverages a database management system that is also known as DBMS that can produce reports and spreadsheets export while adding the ability to store for a far more data, query, filter, and manipulate the data and also enable data sharing between various departments inside the operator, as well as known ops and data sharing partners. During the wall completion process, the wall site manager uh, typically tracks activities and costs in a, a daily completion report and cost report respectively. This also rolls into a completion summary report. These reports serve a variety of valuable functions as described below. Understanding the progress, problems, and productivity of the team, awareness of the efficiency of the service provider as a tool for evaluating your fleet operations and service providers, understanding the cause of any delay, cause overruns, and problems, sharing the reports with the non of non of partners establishing the value of the asset once selling out post sale, providing the buyer with the information he needs to optimize new walls and to maintain existing walls. For work over crews to understand what is downhole um, prior to working on it. Providing information to the various regulatory agency as background materials for capital raising efforts, completion reporting is one aspect of the completion data flow. It starts with uh, ingesting the drilling data so that you can tune the completion accordingly. The next aspect is the completion design process and the data it generates. Then you have the real-time completion data which may be monitored or processed in real time. Then comes the reporting process and the data it uh, and the data it generates. After this comes the data sharing with non-ops and data sharing partners. Finally, you have the post job data analysis where you where you generate key matrices, com comparison, data visualization, and more. Enables you to assess the efficiency of the processes and methods which is used to optimize the future was then the data is handed to the production team so that they can optimize maintenance and production of the work. As you can see, the completion report isn't merely a document but merely on phase of the flow of data. While completion optimization. Well, while completion optimization is the analysis of completion data in order to improve while productivity while reducing well cost. As stated above, the key to ENP profitability in tight oil and gas was is operational efficiency or doing more for less. While some ENP companies look for the fixed cookbook for a particular geology area or the basin, the most effective operators are constantly uh, pouring uh, over internal and external data in order to discover new and better methods. At a typical cost of uh, $6 million to $9 million per onshore horizontal wall, most companies are unwilling to test significant changes to their process. They instead prefer to employ stepwise improvement at the same time, they learn from others what has worked in similar geologies. The combination of various stepwise advances has resulted in a very impressive uh, cumulative advances in efficiency. While completion optimizing is a data-driven process that requires the following. Data quality, data depth, data breadth and variability, data quality, the old age uh, garbage in 
garbage out applies here. If your data is incorrect, your result will be incorrect. Software tool, internal processes and solid data quality control are required to ensure that you start with high quality data. Data DAB, this essentially refers to how much data you will collect. You will want to uh, blend operation data, for example, pressures with materials data, um, proper types and uh, um, amounts, uh, activity data, processes used on the wall, production, results, cost information, directional survey, uh, survey data, and various key metrics derived from this data. All of this can be used in what if scenario data visualization and dashboarding and machine learning to fuel optim optimization. Data breadth and variability. Data breadth and uh, uh, variability refers to uh, having large number of walls in your system. The more walls you have, the more statistically relevant the result. You also need variability between walls. If every wall is the exact same, you can have 1000 walls in the system and learn nothing. However, a high degree of variability between walls enables you to learn what factors improve wall result. This is analogous to the uh, favorable adoption in evolution. If nothing changes, there is no way to learn how changes can affect results. So there is no optimization. Data variability or diversity is critical to fuel wall completion optimization. However, this data must also be high quality and have sufficient depth. Public data can help with breadth, including many words, but is woefully inadequate in terms of the data depth. Public data can also suffer from intentional um, obfuscation by, oper by operators in their reporting. For example, words might have multiple uh, literal uh, side, side tracks, etc., and yet that is not identified in the data. This can result in the erroneous insights. Uh, erroneous results are more problematic than no results at all since they send you in the wrong direction. We believe that the only solution sourcing data that offers quality, depth, and breadth and reliability is through data sharing relationship. While completion data sharing. While data is generally shared for the following purposes. Shared with non ops under uh, standard JOA agreements under data sharing agreements by directional Shared with the owners of the mineral rights, shared with the investor, for example, private equity investors, shared with the potential uh, acquirers of the assets, for example, setting up a data room, shared by the service providers to the operator. As an operator, inbound data sharing is an excellent way to get data that is high quality, broad, and deep. When the key divider of the ENP business was finding oil and gas, companies viewed all wealth data as a company secret never to be sharing with competition. They wanted to buy all of them surrounding land cheaply and over time as their capital grew. Uh, if a word got out about a major find, their completion would buy up the land around them. Today, the key driver of ENP success is operational efficiency. Most of the uh, mineral rights have been acquired around uh, around non shale basin, so completion for mineral rights is less of an issue. While some companies still uh, jealously guard their uh, procedures. Most uh, realize that the community employees at operators and services companies and their employees provide a communication channel that share best practice even if a service provider adheres to non-disclosure agreement and operator can say free this this well like you did that one for my neighbor. How? Uh, with the CAD already being out of the bag on best practice, most operators recognize that the data sharing is an excellent way of accumulating superior data for evaluation and optimization. One of the barriers to more extensive data sharing is the uh, tower of Babel issues. Most completion data is stored in separate sheets with each company and sometimes each engineer employing their own separate sheet structure. If typically requires completely retyping the data data from a sharing partner into your format in order to make it usable. However, separate sheets are suboptimal tools for searching, selecting a groups of words based upon a certain criteria and then processing the, those words using various optimization tools. The most effective data store for optimization is a database. While completion software, there are a number of software solutions that focus on wall completion data. The service providers have software specific uh, to their function, for example, Freak Focus. There are various tools for handling SCA, DA data 
uh, from smart devices, activities and cost reporting tools are available. There are real time tools for handling the real time or per second data, but the primary tools used for wall completion optimization are Excel or a database for data storage and manipulation. Various data visualization tools, for example, Sportfire and various machine learning tools. Machine learning is still early in oil and gas. Now, while you can read uh, an in-depth analysis of the relative merits of the separate sheet and database, here is a quick synopsis of the uh, re relative merits. Uh, separate sheet, uh, for example, uh, first we will discuss the pros and then cons. Pros, ideal for quick and simple data entry and uh, calculation, for example, key matrices. Provide a good visual uh, mecha mechanism for comparing one uh, attribute across multiple wells by simply scanning a row, column, or generating a simple chart. And cons, uh, inefficient as data depth increases because the user is forced to scroll far too much, uh, maintaining uh, and maintaining, for example, and 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 relationship, for example, one well, uh, one hundred stages is difficult and makes the separate sheet hard to maintain. Uh, terrible at selecting wall based on the various criteria, uh, filtering wall, getting uh, to a working set of wells, not designed for data sharing and assessing right control. The database uh, pro ideal for massive depth and breadth of data, designed for. Uh, iterative wall uh, selection based upon any number of any number of criteria filtering and processing uh, across big data designed for maintaining rich relationship and providing uh, granular access control which is uh, which is required for uh, data sharing uh, the database can also output separate sheets making it an ideal data storage and processing tool uh, con uh, requires more technical expertise to design and build but application built on database tend to be more user friendly than separate show, than separate sheets software. The, the the typical user can quickly add a new formula in a separate sheet, but requires how to work with the database. Okay, finally, it's the time to discuss the future of the wall completion. Drilling is fairly mature process, while drilling continues to benefit from advancement in technologies and methods. The area where we see the most rapid advancement and the biggest opportunity for optimization is in the completion phase. Since it is advancing more rapidly. It is a phase where optimizing can deliver the biggest gain in the efficiency at this time. We envision a day one extensive wireline data will inform completion design with more variation from state to state. In effect, a completion design that is optimized for the specific characteristics of each wall. It is generally believed that advances in technology will make more shale basin economically to drill at low oil and gas prices. In short, uh, we see a bright future that, uh, in fact, for, uh, from riding that technology uh, curve towards cheaper and more efficient solutions. Okay, now, uh, now the most important, what can I do now? Uh, I lost someone I love in an oil and rig blowout. Losing a family member is the most difficult experience any person will go through. You have questions that need to be answered. Why did the blowout happen in the first place? Who is responsible? Who is responsible for that that doleful incident? You are also dealing with the honorary arrangements and trying to figure out how to make and meet with the sudden loss of support that you loved one provided. As this uh, video is you know not a paid promotion, so we can't mention any law firm. There are many law firms available that will help you to get answer you deserve and the support you need. Applying their resources and the knowledge of the law that apply to oil rig blowout, they can hold responsible parties accountable and help you need and help you when you need it most. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video and you learned a lot of new things. See you in the next video. Take care.